Are you wondering how to solve the 2021 AP SATS FRQ exam question number three? Well, you've come to the right video. Let's dive right into it. This was a great problem dealing with probability distributions. Combines a couple different big ideas throughout the entire course. So it's a really good one to take a look at. To increase morale among employees, a company began a program in which one employee is randomly selected each week to receive a gift card. Each of the company's 200 employees is equally likely to be selected each week, and the same employee could be selected more than once. Each week's selection is independent from each other week. Consider the probability that a particular employee receives at least one gift card in a 52-week year. So, define the random variable of interest and state how the random variable is distributed. So again, we're considering the probability that a particular employee receives at least one gift card over a 52-week year. So define the random variable. So I'm going to define this random variable as X. Obviously, you could use a G for gift card or, or a C for card. I'm just going to use a generic X. But I'm going to define X as how many gift cards an employee wins over 52 weeks. All right, it did say that an employee could win more than once, and it also said that the selection is independent from week to week. So what happens one week has absolutely no bearing on what happens next week. So John could win this week, and John can win next week, for crying out loud, who knows? Now, when we talk about a probability distribution, we need to find the probability of success. Well, what is the probability during any one week that an employee successfully wins? Well, um, there are 200 names in the, in the proverbial jar, and only one of them has your name on it. So each employee has a 1 out of 200 chance of winning. That is a probability of 0 0.005 or 0.5%. Okay, and the other thing that's important here is that we're only looking at 52 weeks. So how many gift cards can an employee win? Well, they could win zero. They could never win. They could win once. They can win twice. They can win three times. Or it would probably be an unbelievably crazy event if it happened, but one employee could win every single week for 52 straight weeks because of the fact that it did say that um, an employee could win more than once and each week is independent of the next. Now, the last key feature here is what type of random variable is this or how is it distributed? This is, of course, a binomial distribution. Now, why is it a binomial distribution? Well, for starters, I was given two things, the probability of success, which I identified, and the trial size, which I identified. But more details as to why it's binomial is that every single week, an employee is either going to win or lose, success or fail. The probability stays consistent. Every single week, anybody can be picked. So every single week, I have that one out of 200 chance of winning. And the trials are independent of the next. So all the three key details that go into making this a binomial distribution definitely occur. So hopefully that all makes sense. Now, part two of question A was to actually determine the probability that an employee receives at least one gift card. Now, it's important that you understand at least one means greater than or equal to one. So we're trying to find the probability, not of exactly one gift card, one or more. That means you win one or two or three or four or five or six or seven, all the way up to possibly winning 52. Now, that's a lot of work to do. If you know the binomial distribution, you know that doing the calculations takes a lot of work. I don't want to do all of those calculations. So here's what I'm going to think about. I'm going to think about never winning because the opposite of at least one is none. If I make a list of all the possibilities for X, that would be win zero gift cards, one gift card, two gift cards, three gift cards, four gift cards, five gift, gift cards, six gift cards, all the way up to 52 gift cards. Well, I'm looking for one or more. So this is all the values that I'm trying to find the probability of, and that's a lot of work. So how about we just find the probability of zero and then subtract it away? So to find the probability that the random variable is greater than or equal to one, I'm going to do one minus the probability that the random variable equals zero. If I take 100%, that's everything that could happen, and I get rid of the probability that they never win a gift card, I'll be left with at least one. Hopefully my logic there makes sense. So what is the probability that they win zero gift cards? Well, that would be 200, 
oh, excuse me, not 200. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. 52 trials. That'd be 52 to zero. 52 weeks in the year and none of them do I win a gift card. And that would be 0 0.005 to the zero. No success. Now that would mean that the 52 weeks, every one of them, I fail. And I have a typo there again. I'm trying to write too fast. I'm sorry. The opposite of success would be the opposite. One minus 0 0.005 would be 0 0.995. So remember the three pieces that go into a binomial distribution. This first piece is how many different ways it can happen. Well, the good news is you shouldn't have to jump to a calculator here because there's only one way you could never win. You you lose, 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 lose every 52 times. And then this is the probability of success, which I have none of, no successes. And then there would be 52 straight failures. So I'm going to find that probability and I'm going to show you to do that on your calculator. I'm going to do one minus that value to get my final answer. All right, so here's my calculator. I'm going to show you to do this on a TI-84. So a couple of things you could do. One is a really cool shortcut. Second VARS, you could go up to binomial PDF. Binomial PDF will calculate any individual outcome of a binomial distribution. All you have to do is tell it the number of trials, 52 trials, probability of success 0 0.005. That's the one out of 200. And then I'm looking for exactly zero. Zero successes. This is, it's going to do all the math for me, which is super easy, 0 0.7705. So remember, I have to do one minus that to get the probability that I win at least one. So one minus 0 0.00, excuse me, one minus 0 0.7705 is 0.2295. So I do have a 22.95% chance of winning at least one gift card. So as a employee, I, I got a pretty good chance that throughout the year I'm going to win at least one gift card. Could even win more, but probably win at least one is, is actually pretty good. Now, just to show you a couple other ways you can do this on your calculator, um, if you want to do it in the three different pieces of the binomial distribution, the first thing we have to do is the 52, and then I'm going to hit math, slide over to PRB for probability, go down to the NCR, and this will tell me how many different options are. This is just that first piece for 52, choose zero. And again, that's something that you should know because it's pretty simple to say, all right, I got 52 weeks. How many different ways can I never win? Well, there's only one, never win. And I'm going to take that one. I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.005 raised to the zero. There's no successes, which if you know basic algebra, the probability of that is one or so 0 0.005 raised to zero, what I meant to say is 0 0.005 raised to zero is one, times point, um, the opposite is the 0 0.995 raised to the 52. Basically, it'd be 52 straight weeks of losing. Probability I lose is 199 out of 200, 0 0.995, and I need that to happen every single week for 52 weeks, so 0 0.7705, there it is again. But then don't forget, I'm trying to find one or more, so I actually need to subtract away the probability of never winning. So that's how I get to a final answer, 0 0.2295. So pretty good chance that as an employee, you've got a good chance that at some point during the year, you will win at least one gift card. All right, part B now says calculate and interpret the expected value for the number of gift cards a particular employee will receive in a 52-year week. Now, this is where you do have to remember the formula for the expected value. You could use mu for the mean because an expected value is a mean, or you could use a capital E there for the expected value of X, however you want to do that. But it's a pretty easy formula. It's simply N times P. If you know your binomial, your, your mean or your expected value formula is very simple. So that'd be 52 times the probability of success, 0 0.005, and this would be 0.26. Now they act, they also want us to not just to calculate it, so some kids will actually stop right there and receive half credit, but we also have to interpret. What does that mean? So if this process of selecting a random winner for a gift card each week was repeated for a large number of years, so every single year we do this, every single year we do this, um, and maybe every year I note how many gift cards I win. First year, I never won. Second year, I won one gift card. Third year, I won zero. Third year or fourth year, I somehow won two gift cards, right? So again, if I kept track every single year, X, how many gift cards I win, in the long run, after looking at a large number of years, the average number of gift cards I win is 0.26 gift cards per year. 
So on average, I expect to win 0.26 gift cards per year. And then you can actually multiply that out just to kind of have that make some kind of sense. That would be roughly one gift, gift card every four years. So 0.26 is approximately, it's close to a quarter. So every four years, I would hope to win at least one gift card. One gift card should be coming my way every four years on average. Doesn't guarantee it, but on average. So it's the idea of what we expect in the long run. A mean or an expected value is what we would expect if this random variable were repeated, in this case, many, many, many years. All right, moving on to part C. Suppose that Agatha, an employee at the company, never receives a gift card for the entire 52-week year. Based on her experience, does Agatha have a strong argument that the selection process was not truly random? Well, if we're going to find out if somebody has convincing evidence or not, we basically start with, hey, what you're claiming happened. What's the probability? Let's find the probability of what happened to you. Now, she says that she never won. Now, we actually already figured this out. The probability that somebody goes 52 weeks and doesn't get a single gift card would be 52 choose zero, which we already determined that's one. 0 0.005 raised to zero, which mathematically is also one. And then that would be 0 0.995 to the 52. Basically, they lose every single week. And again, we actually already calculated that as well, and we got 0 0.7705. So Agatha has a 77.05% 7 chance of never getting a gift card. That's actually very, very likely. And that's not just true for Agatha. That's true for any random employee. Any random employee has a 77.05% chance of never winning a gift card. So at the end of the day, if this happened, Agatha, it's not weird. It's not unlikely. It's certainly not below 1% or even 5%, right? If you believe that something is weird under 5 or 1%, this isn't even remotely close to this. So if Agatha came to me and complained, I never won a gift card, I'd say, Agatha, listen, Joe, he never won a gift card. Dave, he never won a gift card. Mike, he never won a gift card. For crying out loud, Agatha, there's a 77% chance that you'd never win a gift card. It's not unlikely. It's not weird. It doesn't mean that there's any bias or any unrandom thing. No one's trying to pull a fast one and not let Agatha win a gift card, all right? This outcome that you're claiming to be weird is not weird. So I does, you know, this this does not constitute any evidence at all that something unbiased or or random is going or biased or random is going on here. Okay. So I would tell Agatha, hey, you know, it sucks that you didn't win, but listen, lots of people don't win. The probability that you never win is, is pretty likely. So no evidence that something unrandom is going on here. All right, that's it for question number three from the 2021 exam. If you're looking for more um, videos, I got tons of more videos for tons of more FRQ questions, so stay posted.